Well, we just saw Maze Runner, and on this show I take my friends out, we go see a movie, uh, we have a review in the car and a discussion. The review part is spoiler free, so if you're on the fence and trying to decide if this is a movie for you, check that part out. If you've already seen the movie or just want to know what all of our thoughts are and don't care about spoilers, watch the whole thing. Um, the Maze Runner is obviously based on a book, it's based on a series of books, um, like a lot of other sort of young adult adaptations that have come out, science fiction adaptations that have come out. Um, it's very much setting up the franchise, establishing the franchise, and, and putting us in, you know, giving us a way in these characters. Um, I felt as though if I had read the books before watching the movie, I probably would have enjoyed it quite a bit more. Um, as it was, I found it to be fairly slow, especially after the first and second act or so um, it just got really tedious for them to still be confused about what was happening um, for them to have yet another mystery come up to be solved um, it seemed very strange to me that you know they people start remembering things but then there's still pieces of the puzzle that they don't get or they're being tricked about um, so for me, it was just kind of frustrating um, to watch. It was like I wanted these characters to uh, get some kind of accomplishment or some sense of, of progress, um, but I felt like the characters that I got to know, um, which tended to be the ones that survived the most and, and all that sort of thing, uh, were, you know, they were fine, they were fine, and then it just seemed like, they obviously can't figure everything out in this movie, so they're just going to have to wait, and that was kind of disappointing. Um, it also felt very much like a video game, and I felt kind of bad that I wasn't able to play it. I just had to sit back and watch it. Um, there was a lot of platforming and vine climbing, and I felt like I was watching Uncharted sometimes. Um, but maybe that's just me. Anyway, that's what I thought. What did you guys think? I really liked it. I mean, it was... It started off really fast, and then it, it kind of slowed down towards the end. But, you know, there was enough excitement in that first half to kind of to keep me into it. Because the second half of the movie, they're setting up for the sequel. And so there you go. I, I liked it. Okay. Um, I enjoyed it overall. I'm probably somewhere between Dale and Aaron. Um, I didn't... I never felt like any part of the movie was really slow for me, so I, I didn't have an issue with that. I did feel like with them trying to uh, set up for the sequel, then all of a sudden there's all this big exposition dump at the end, and I almost felt like like they found like the worst amount of exposition to give. Like they either needed to give less or they needed to give more. Yes. Because the amount they gave really just made things more confusing to me. I would have rather just have them tried to tell me less or tried to tell me more. And we'll get into that in the, yeah, the second yeah, half. I, th I think knowing things from the book would probably have, have made a big difference. I agree with you. My assumption is the book probably didn't have one big exposition dump. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if the book kind of spread some of that stuff out. But overall, I enjoyed it. Um, I'd be interested to see if, if, if they do get to make a sequel because that'll make a big difference. To me on how this oh, I'm movie was. I'm pretty sure they'll get to yeah. make it. This this should this should be very successful. What do you think? I liked it. I guess um, I kind of feel like you did, Dale. Uh, that two thirds of the way through, it just kind of lost me. They actually had some pretty exciting things in the last third of the movie, but I just was kind of over it at that point. The first half or so, I really liked though. Um, and then there was just kind of a point, and I just sort of lost interest and wasn't was just kind of out of the movie at that point and even though there were big things and big revelations and big action scenes and yeah. things like that after that it was just kind of like I didn't really care anymore. And that's something we <laughs> talk about when we do these reviews quite a bit is that when you adapt something to film or when you adapt something for the screen um, sometimes it doesn't quite gel the way that it should mm -hmm. meaning that if this were written for, as a screenplay like if this were written as a film from the beginning it would probably be a hundred minutes long. It wouldn't be a two-hour movie. It yeah. wouldn't, you know, you don't need a two-hour movie to tell this story. But because you have the book and you're trying to adapt and trying to bring in as much detail and and um, make us care about some of these characters that that in in a movie screenplay would be relatively minor, or, you know, wouldn't even get names, that kind of thing. Um, it makes it, it that kind of stuff makes a difference. And to 
your point, Jeremiah, about the exposition dump at the end, um, you know, that's, that's the kind of thing that the, there's choices that were made there that I agree I would have made different choices if I had written the screenplay for this. Um, I would have, um, and we need to get into spoilers before we can talk about that. So, um, mm-hmm. this is the point where if you don't want to know more about the movie, you should stop watching. Um, so yeah, don't let us spoil it for you. Go enjoy the movie. Um, what do we know? Um, the, 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 the end reveal, um, I would have ended it just with the reveal that she's still alive. That's all I would have showed. I wouldn't have had her speak. Yeah. I wouldn't have had her say like what their plan is or right. what any of that was. Now I can also understand how there would probably be a ton of viewers that would be really uh, upset with that. Ending. Because they knew. Well, not, <laughs> not because they knew, but because, uh, it, it, like people that got into it completely blind oh, well, yeah. would have been really upset. Like what, the hell just happened? what just happened? Like I got to wait until the yeah. next movie to of course, find I out. I still kind of feel like that anyway. Right. <laughs> so that's that's just sort of my thing with it, but I also felt like it wasn't that the third act was boring, like you were saying, John. Like John was saying, like there was exciting things happening, and these revelations, and there was like the Super Metroid splash screen or the Half Life section that came up where they walk into the lab and everybody's dead. <laughs> like all of that stuff should have been really fun and, and interesting, but the first hour to hour and 25 minutes of the movie was so much longer than it needed to be and without trimming that stuff out it just became this slog it was like just let them open the freaking door already <laughs> like i'm tired of waiting for them to figure out how to break the door um and the other part that really lost me was the first time that they encountered the door they they got through because they had the little canister thing and then it scanned, it scanned them. them yeah and I thought, because I'm still playing video games in my head, right? So I'm like, oh, it's scanning. It wants to see a griever there. Exactly, yeah. So you got to get a griever to run in to open the door. That's how you that's how you solve this. They get there the next time, and there's this, like... Now there's a code they There's have to a punch code in. you have to punch yeah, in. That, I was that, like... That threw me off, too. What? <laughs> and, and maybe that makes sense in the book. Maybe they explain that better, but it was like... It was like two different video game puzzles. I don't. I, I didn't get it. Each door's different. The thing that frustrated <laughs> me, the thing that frustrated me actually took place after that. After the uh, right before the big reveal, the chick was still alive. Yeah. Uh, why wasn't anybody asking? Oh, look, we're flying over the damn grove. Why didn't y'all just pop in with this helicopter and save us? Yeah, no shit. Nobody asked that question. Or maybe they're gonna ask it in the sequel. Who knows? Yeah. Well, but yeah. that may be part of the plan, though. I'm not sure. Right. Yeah, because I'm it not... seems obvious that those soldiers are in on it. They're, right. They're complicit. Well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Wouldn't somebody be like, oh, well, you, you know, if you're here to save oh, well, us. Oh, right. And they probably will. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 I see yeah, what I see, you're see, saying. See, in the characters' minds. Yeah. Why, why aren't the characters asking that? Yeah. 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 And if this is, I mean, what was uh, um, a movie that did something similar a lot better was Edge of Tomorrow, where you have like they keep exploring further and further out you know they they live diary people they keep exploring further and further out and learning more uh things that they're supposed to be learning um and instead of it continuously using this this uh this like tick of well we don't no one remembers anything it's like okay well now i've got all my memories back and I only remember enough to get us to the end of this movie. Yeah. yeah. I well, I kind of took that as they didn't necessarily, because whatever they did to lose their memories, I don't know that, because I don't think they ever said they got all their memories back, so I think they're just kind of playing fast and loose with Wait. what and how much they remember. But that, I mean, that that, that right. whole, uh, I, I, I don't know what you call it, but that whole um, tactic or that whole, like, storytelling crutch sure, sure. is really problematic yeah. because... It, they can just lie, they could just sit there and, and lean on that the entire movie, yeah. which yeah, is what I felt like they did for this movie. Mm-hmm. It was just like we we only have as much information as the movie wants us to have because they conveniently only remember enough for us to, to have the, the information. Next, yeah. How did the bad kid get in there at the end? Plot everything, twist, plot, everything, convenient yeah. plot. 
Yeah, yeah. I was like Deus Ex Machina. Yeah, exactly. He also struck me as like, I mean, I'm sure this isn't really uh, ob- honestly true, but he struck me as being like four years older than everybody else. <laughs> Like just in terms of size there, and everything, there was like was one of the kid. extras there, who because I mean yeah. there were all these like like kids that were supposed to be like around sixteen or so, except for one who was noticeably younger. But there was like one extra that they just kind of like panned the camera over a few times. It's like, oh my god, that guy's like thirty, <laughs> <laughs> it's, which probably a lot of the actors are, but they're like they look like they're teenagers. Yeah, it's like the nineteen-year-old sophomore at yeah. your school. Yep. So. Um, so Dale, I haven't seen. Was it Edge of Tomorrow you're talking about? Mm-hmm. So I haven't seen that, but the one thing that I was thinking that this movie felt like it had a lot of the same story beats as, particularly at the end, mm-hmm. was Cabin in the Woods. Yeah, um, I was and, getting some and of those vibes, it wasn't. Yeah. I mean, for the first, when it's just them going through the maze and coming back, it's not so much then. But then, like when they go in and they find all the dead scientists and they find out that they're that this is really being done for an allegedly good reason, may or may not be good. I guess we'll find out in the next movie. But it's like, it's like wow, this. This is just kind of Cabin in the Woods, but Cabin in the Woods does it so much better. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. And and again, I mean, this is this is one of these reviews that I have to say, like, I realize that we're probably sacrileging this series, having not read the books. Like, there, there this is probably a fine movie for fans of this yeah. series, for fans of the story. It's just not, on its own, by itself, it's not a great movie. But it's most- a Good movie. Most people who go see this movie won't have read the books. I mean, because there are we are, we are in a society where there are way more people who see movies than read books. I know those of you out there who've read the books don't believe that, but in fact, there will be way I more people seeing yeah. this movie than have read the book. And it's right or wrong. And it, it it's entertaining, and it's it's a movie that, like, if I watched it at home, I would watch it in two sittings. Yeah. See, I I would break it apart. I would get bored at one some point and be like, but not having read the book, and in particular, or not having read the sequel or sequels however many there are there are some things that they do like when they introduce the girl she served no actual purpose yeah that's true in the movie now i would assume that maybe in the sequels that she's the main character's love interest that's not at all in this book i mean she helps him remember some things but he also finds other ways to remember things so there's no Mm -hmm. there's there's she has no plot purpose at all in this movie and they spend a lot of time on her arrival and her assimilation into the group that could have been cut but I'm gonna assume that she needs to be there for the subsequent movies yeah I think I mean what I got out of it was that they were under attack and they knew that this was the last person they could send Mm -hmm. so to save her life they sent her in Instead yeah. of leaving her, kind of thought, leaving her yeah. in the lab to yeah. be, because I, I had like a, before they like revealed the whole what happened to all the scientists kind of thing, which like, was a lie. But right, yeah. like <laughs> like in my head, I was thinking, okay, like some crazy crap went down, and she's like, the only way I'm going to get out of here is by going in the bus. Like for a second, I thought like she was sac. I mean, which like, it's probably still yeah. similar to what happened, so that they could get some silly message through or whatever. One thing I will, I mean, I really will give this movie is. The acting is fantastic. Yeah, for being a bunch of kids, yeah. The the lead character, the guy that plays Thomas, is amazingly good. Mm-hmm. I've never seen him in anything before, but he was mm-hmm. really on good. Uh, and she's on skins. I knew. I knew. I knew she was something. good. She wasn't in very much of it. I, I yeah, thought she fun. was good. Um, the kid that played Jojen in Game of Thrones was good. Yeah. Yep, he's good. Um, he's new in this one. He's actually better in this he, than he is in Game of Thrones, in my opinion. He has more to do. Yeah. Well, wasn't he the kid from Jerry Maguire? Uh, no, 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 no. He was the kid from, um, uh, what's the other? Uh, oh, uh, Love Actually. Yep. Love Actually. That, Love that Actually. was the one. Yes. That was the one. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Show me the money. <laughs> Shut up. Well, Shut you've enjoyed up. our review. Thanks for watching. Go watch um, it. Yep, go check it out if you cool. can. Um, that was The Maze Runner. If you like the way we do these, please like us and subscribe to us. We really please. appreciate it. And check out all the written and video reviews at dalemaxfield.com. Thanks for watching.